Nearly every one of these students uses Facebook. But when they are on it, do they really understand how much they are revealing about themselves to such a large network of people? <laughs> so how many times are you on Facebook a day? Um, okay, I'll say five. Uh, two. In fact, due to the near obsession many have with Facebook, sometimes some scary activity happens and spills over into students' public lives. Take this situation, for example. It's like a scary story. They just kept messaging me all the time. What did they say? I didn't know who it was. Like, just like creepy things. What did they say? This is like really weird. I don't I don't know, like just. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a bit. Where are you? We can hang out. Like, they said yeah, that? Stop yeah. with me getting they out and say to, that. Like, meet me, like during lunch, like outside. It was just like in the summer club, so it's like. You didn't know who it was? No, like it's somebody in our school. Have you met them yet? <laughs> They're in my Spanish class. Though children's TV shows try to teach kids how to use Facebook, it seems like they'll never learn. I can't believe you let your WizTech buddy set you up on a blind date. And all you know from her is what you've learned from her profile on WizFace. You haven't even seen her. She's hot. And she's into all the same things that I'm into. Please. Listen, everybody's hot on WizFace because they don't show their real picture and they lie about what they're into. What picture did she see of you? <laughs> oh, I don't think pictures really capture my essence. That's why I posted a complicated mathematical equation. Come shake it out. Oh, I get it. Because you're hard to figure out and nobody cares enough to try. <laughs> what other embarrassing things you have in your embarrassing page? <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe you posted that picture with you and that centaur. <laughs> Don't you wish you would have told you she was half horse and half girl before you asked her to whisk tech prom? I saved a lot on a limo. <laughs> I'm just saying, people or horses are not always honest on his face. <laughs> Take this student, for example, who comes to the realization that she may be sharing more with the world than she thinks. On average, how many times a day do you check your Facebook or MySpace? Um, well, I have a Facebook and probably like around 10, I would say. Wow, okay. And do you feel comfortable displaying private information that, that your friends wouldn't necessarily know about you? That um, they tend to know from Facebook? Well, actually, I um, put my pr profile on private, so people people who are in this school actually can't even see my profile unless they're my friends. So, how many friends did you say you have on Facebook? Uh, <laughs> like probably like like five hundred. And would you say your personal friends with all of them? No. We spoke to guidance counselor Jane Ellen Peregrine about the ways in which excessive displays of information can sometimes exceed the realm of high school and into one's college career or job search. I would just be aware of that and I'd be careful because I think what's happening with technology in general, Facebook, um, Skyping and all this other stuff, is that too much information gets out there. And what's happened is I think kids reveal a lot of personal stuff that in the past would not have been done in that way. So I would just be careful of that if I were um, using any of those things. Perhaps NYU professor Clay Shirky said it best when he said, You're in public, but you're not in public. Right? If you were to sit up here with a shotgun microphone and point it down at Rockefeller mm -hmm. Center and be listening in on people's conversations, well, they were, you know, they were out at Rockefeller Center, right? How public is that? What expectation of privacy did they have? Exactly so. right. And yet, if they knew that someone was listening in with a shotgun mic, they'd be a little weirded out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that sense, right, is where it's where what the technology makes possible is colliding with our social sense of this kind of semi-public, semi-private sphere, mm -hmm. that's what's being contested, right? That's what's being fought over. The most seriously negative consequence of this is if somehow as a society we don't carve out some space for documented personal action that's okay, then we will really have robbed young people of something they didn't even, they won't even know they're missing right? because, you know, the, they, they never leave the net of surveillance.